Welcome back to Dan Recaps. Today, I'm going to explain the movie Benji, released in the year 2018. The movie kicks off as a dog and his puppies are being taken away, but accidentally, one of the puppies is left behind. The orphan puppy wanders through the suburbs over the years as it grows up in harsh conditions. One day, it jumps on board a truck to snuggle up on a sofa in the back. The driver, who is headed to the city, unknowingly takes the dog with him. In the city, we meet a boy named Carter who's being bullied for being too smart and getting far better grades than his classmates. At the same time, the dog hops out of the truck and explores its new surroundings in search of food. It picks up some food from a vendor and runs off to eat it, but is scared off by a scruffy dog which then steals his food. As Carter walks around the city, he comes across the dog and connects with him as they lock eyes. However, in the same way a soulmate may immediately disappear after seeing one another in the train station, the dog vanishes. But then, Carter spots the dog hiding in a vent out of fear. So he buys some strawberries to try and lure the dog out as he tries to develop a bond. The dog devours the berries and Carter walks away, leaving a trail of the fruit along the way. Carter then heads to pick up his sister Frankie, who practices dancing as she prepares for a recital. The duo leave as Frankie talks about her big dreams of becoming a star and moving abroad. From a distance, the dog follows along and jumps on the same streetcar as them. The siblings are then seen headed for Mr. King's, one of their favorite shops. They plan to buy back their dad's watch, which their mom sold after he passed away. Carter, who has been sacrificing his lunch money to get the watch, hands over the money to Mr. King. Carter asks him to remove the watch from the display so no one else can buy it, but he denies. Meanwhile, the dog is seen sitting outside the shop, watching them. The pair leaves the premises and heads home, and though Frankie has almost given up on the watch, Carter remains optimistic about finally getting it back. In the shop, Mr. King is seen taking the watch out from the display and putting it into his safe. When the kids get home, Carter locks the door behind them. The dog, still in pursuit, cleverly climbs up to their window. Carter is surprised when Frankie spots the dog at the window. They pick him up and happily give him a bath since he's dirty and smelly. However, Frankie is worried about their mom finding the dog as she thinks she will make them get rid of him. They decide to keep it a secret and hide him in their room. Later on, their mom named Miss Hughes gets home from her job as an ambulance driver. She notices their weird behavior despite trying their best to act normal. To their shock, the dog breaks out of their room and heads straight for the living room. Things almost get out of hand, but Carter manages to keep his mom occupied while the dog leaves. When the kids go to bed, they try to think of a name for the dog. Carter suggests Michael Jordan, but Frankie says it's lame for a dog. They settle on Benji, and the dog seems to like it too. Later on, Miss Hughes has a breakdown while telling her fear and struggles to her dead husband. Benji overhears this and sympathizes with her. When she falls asleep, he covers her up with the blankets and switches off the light. The following morning, when she moves to kiss her kids goodbye, she comes across Benji. The two try their best to convince their mom to keep him, but she remains adamant that he has to leave since she doesn't have enough time or money to take care of him. They are heartbroken by this, and Carter painfully puts Benji out in the rain, and the two have a hard time parting ways. Carter is then seen by himself crying, while Benji sadly wanders through the city. The following day, Benji is seen patiently sitting at the school's gate, waiting for Carter, but doesn't meet him. In the next scene, the siblings walk to Mr. King's shop, but this time with a different motive. Carter has decided to give up on the watch and takes back the money since his mom didn't let them keep Benji. They finally get there, but Mr. King asks them to leave as he's already sold the watch. Frankie vows to call the cops to report him as a liar, and it's at this moment that she knew she messed up. It turns out that a robbery is in progress at the shop and one of the robbers, named Sid, holds them hostage. After stealing the items, Sid asks Titus, another of the robbers and his brother, to tie up Mr. King as he leads the kids through the back door. Sid tells them to remain silent and they would soon be free since they are almost done. 
However, Mr. King calls for help, and as Frankie tries to get up, she accidentally pulls off Sid's mask. Meanwhile, after missing the kids from the school, Benji walks to the shop and looks through the window, but doesn't see them. Sid then forces the kids into his van, since they have seen his identity, and they call for help as they are taken away. Luckily, Benji hears them and chases after the van, and it's not long before Carter notices him. In the van, their mom calls them, but Sid commands Titus to get rid of the phone, prompting him to throw it out the window. Unfortunately, Benji comes across a bunch of clowns who scare him and he loses the van. He is saddened by this and he walks away defeated. Carter sadly notices this too, but has an amazing idea when he notices some strawberries in the van. He uses the berries to mark the van's route with hopes that Benji would find them. The van finally stops at an old deserted house and Titus ties them up. Meanwhile, their mom tries calling them while apologizing as she thinks that's the reason they aren't picking up her calls. Meanwhile, Benji follows the route and finally reaches the old house. However, things head south as he's spotted by Sid's Rottweiler who chases him and later on, Sid and Titus join forces to find him. Benji is intelligent and manages to trap Titus and the dog. He also outsmarts Sid and leaves him in an old bus as he rushes to the house. He tries to untie the kids, but the knots are way too difficult for him. Suddenly, Sid shows up with his dog, prompting Benji to run for his life. He heads back to the city and climbs up to Carter's window, hoping to find Miss Hughes, but she isn't home. His next stop is at Mr. King's shop, and once more, he uses his super intelligence to open the locked door. Later on, a detective named Burton gets to the scene where Miss Hughes joins them later. Meanwhile, Benji, who was left inside the shop, spots an officer who retrieved one of the robber's masks. He tries to leave the shop, but is locked, but finds another way out through a vent. He then rushes out and snatches the mask from the officer. Mr. King mentions that this dog saved him and maybe he was trying to tell them something. Though Burton thinks it's far-fetched, Miss Hughes decides to follow the dog and the trio gets into the car and follows Benji, who races towards the house. When they arrive, Burton heads inside to check but finds no one there. Due to his little faith in the dog, he doesn't bother to check thoroughly and immediately leaves. Miss Hughes gets mad at Benji for wasting their time and for the second time, she condemns him and sends him away. The trio leave in their car as Benji sluggishly walks away feeling disheartened. Later on, Mr. King talks to Miss Hughes and reveals his love for the kids, which is the reason he kept the watch in the display. He wanted them to come to the shop regularly. But Benji hadn't given up yet and he once more steals some food from a vendor in the street. He uses the food to manipulate the scruffy dog in the garbage to follow him to the old house. After eating the food, the two become friends and they head inside. The dog has a strong sniffing ability and it doesn't take long before they notice an underground opening which they open together. They slowly head inside and find a tunnel which they follow to the other side. At the same time, Miss Hughes storms out of the station and vows to find her kids on her own since the police are not doing enough to help them. To calm her down, Burton informs her about a lead he is pursuing about a van stolen a few days ago which he suspects to be the robber's getaway vehicle. The CCTV footage shows the van headed for the river which is in the direction Benji had followed. It dawns on her that the dog was right and she becomes mad at him for not checking the house thoroughly and they head back to the house. The robbers are now seen on the river as they await a getaway boat which arrives shortly after. Titus goes to check the boat while leaving the kids under the Rottweiler's watch. Meanwhile, Burton gets to the house and notices the underground opening which wasn't open before. They get inside and find the tunnel which Burton is familiar with and knows it exits near the river. Miss Hughes, who is an ambulance driver, races off toward the river. At the river, Benji tricks Rot, leading him to the scruffy dog who scares him. When he gets back, he spots Titus and the kids in the boat and makes chase. At the same time, Miss Hughes and Burton arrive to find Sid and they inquire about the van and her kids. 
He pretends not to know about them. But when Burton turns to call for backup, Sid escapes, prompting the cop to go after him. Sid's run is short-lived as he's stopped by the scruffy dog and his Rottweiler, who is now turned against him, and he is arrested. Then we see the boat's captain is nervous and tries leaving, but the boat doesn't move since it's still docked. When Titus tries to cut off the rope, Benji jumps at him. He hits Benji, but falls into the water himself. Carter manages to hit the captain using an extinguisher. The kids pick up the unconscious Benji and cry over him, thinking he is dead. However, they are relieved when Benji gets up and they all celebrate, including Burton. Burton grabs the watch from Sid while the scruffy dog gets close to him. The movie ends in a celebration as they all rejoice for Benji. That was all from the video. Subscribe for more content like this and leave a like to help the channel out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Take care!